In this video, I'm gonna hopefully blow your minds with a new way of raw processing side of Lightroom that I refer to as dark mode. We're gonna go from this raw file to this final image in a matter of no time. Let's jump in. What's up my friends? My name is Pi, welcome to SR Lounge. If this is your first time here, we are no nonsense photography education, tips, tricks, by working professionals, but designed for everyone. And what we have here is a raw file. I'm gonna go ahead and save all of the conversation on how this image was lit for the end of this tutorial. And if you guys would like to download this file, there is a link below where you can jump over to our site and actually download the raw file so you can follow along. Let's go ahead and jump in. What I'm gonna do first is just reset everything out by pressing Control Shift R or Command Shift R if you're on a Mac. Now, step one, I'm just gonna say dial in whatever preset or color that you'd like to have for your image, okay? So when I'm using this method, usually I like to start with a preset. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and apply Visual Flow from the Modern Pack we're gonna choose soft light. This is gonna kind of apply a bit of warmth. It's gonna give it a bit of contrast. I mean, really, it's kind of finishing the image based on this kind of overall look. So if you were to look at the where it was, this is kind of where it is. It already looks nice and that's great. Now, honestly, it doesn't matter what look you dial in or if you just wanna keep the image completely raw. Let's go to step two. Step two is kind of the tweaking of the base tones and exposure, right? So usually when we're processing an image, what we're typically doing is what you see over here on the right. We're typically lowering the highlights, we're lowering the whites, we're kind of flattening things out a little bit. We're also boosting shadows and maybe adding blacks a little bit. That's the normal way that we're kind of thinking. We're kind of pulling everything together. I actually want to flip your kind of approach and process in raw processing to this kind of version of dark mode. And what we're gonna do with dark mode raw processing is I'm actually going to darken down the exposure. So I'm gonna bring the exposure down to like negative three, okay? Let's just start at negative three. Then what I'm gonna do is raise blacks all the way up. So I'm raising my black point. And from here, I'm gonna let whites just balance out to zero. And now I'm gonna use my highlights to actually control the exposure on the skin tone. So the beautiful part about this is we end up with a very rich and dark tone image without really doing anything. It's a completely different way of actually editing the image versus kind of what we would normally think of. And this is why we've called it dark mode editing. In fact, if you are a visual flow user, we've actually built this in to the tweaks. So what you can do is select any of the presets that you want to get that color dialed in and then simply flip it over to dark mode. And dark mode is gonna adjust in a base tested grouping of settings. But look how cool this is because we automatically have this really great rich tone. And what I would do to finish this now is to add a radial burn. So what this does is I have a preset saved for a radial burn. If I press Shift M to bring up the radial burn, you'll see it's already dropped in. It just saves me a bit of time. And I'm gonna place this right over my subject's face and I can control the level of detail that I have in the background even further. I'm just gonna follow the natural light pattern that's on my subject's face. And by the way, this subject is Jay Hersey. You guys can follow him. We'll tag him here. So from here, we can add a little bit of clarity to the image. We can kind of make any tweaks that we want. We can maybe adjust the tint and temperature a little bit, kind of give it a little bit of a warm tone. Really just have fun with it and play with it to get it exactly where you want the file. But what I want you to see is how dramatically different this looked as the raw file. And we didn't do that much dark mode will work over anything. And what I like to do as well is kind of look back at the original image and go back to this one to kind of make sure, usually my final step is kind of adding in a little bit of whites and refining the highlights just to make sure that the skin tone and kind of those areas doesn't look muted at all. So this looks fantastic. And to summarize, after jumping into dark mode, your step three is just dial in the final color that you wanna have over your image. Now let's go ahead and look at how the image was shot. I'm actually gonna select three of the images. So we're gonna select this one, this one, and this one, and we're gonna put them side by side. So this first image right here, this represents the amulite exposure, right? So if we were to just take a exposure based on his skin, no lights added, that's what we're gonna get, right? The second image 
is actually showing the light position. Here we're using a Profoto two foot octa on a B10. Now this is a high speed sync image and you'll notice that the background is actually very close to the exposure that we want in our final image. The issue though is that to get that background and to get everything looking the way it does in high speed sync, we have to have the flash right up next to our subject. And this means that we're gonna have to jump into Photoshop and remove the light stand with a plate shot. There's nothing wrong with that, but if I can save myself the extra step, I will. So if we look at, uh, let's just go ahead and look between these two images. Let's compare this shot and this shot. And let's go ahead and bring up the exposure settings. So what you'll see here is this is at 1 8,000th, F1.4 and ISO 50. Whenever we're in high speed sync, we know this from lighting one, lighting two, lighting three, we talk about it constantly. Whenever we're in high speed sync, you're gonna get less power out of your flash. And depending on how high your shutter speed goes, even less power because the flash is pulsing to make sure it can get some light into the frame during that shutter duration, that very quick shutter duration. This effectively means that you just don't have a lot of light. You gotta bring the stand in close. So what we've done in this other shot is we actually used a, I believe it's a five stop Tiffin water white filter. It's either a five or six stop. And what that does is it cuts down all the light in the scene and I'm just holding it directly over the lens. This allows me to go to one two hundred of a second F 1.4 and ISO 50 without getting a super bright background. In fact, if we compare just this shot to that brighter shot right here, you can look at the shutter speed, right? So this is one eight thousandth of a second without anything. And you can see just how bright it is. But the same background, despite us shooting at one two hundred of a second, actually this might've been a 10 stop to be honest. So this might've been even more because we've slowed the shutter and still had that dramatically darker background. So it lets us keep a darker background while slowing down our shutter speed or allowing more light into the camera. This allows our flash to work at its kind of optimum power settings, like its optimum efficiency. It can now maximize the amount of power that it can put down. And this is usually a lot of extra light. So usually a flash, when you're staying under one two of a second, can put out two, three, four, five times more light than it can in high speed sync, just depending on how high you raise the shutter. So this allows me to bring it out of the frame and granted the background exposure isn't quite as dark as we want, but that's what we're going to use dark mode for. And we're going to flip the way that we kind of edit to have full control over the shadow in the image. Okay. So going back now, let's go ahead and just look at our final images. I'm hoping you guys enjoyed this because we have such a dramatically different look. Now look at this. Here's dark mode with our final color just compared to this image. We have no Photoshop here. We have the background exactly where we want it. We have our tone exactly where we want it. Everything looks fantastic. And just look at the difference that we have with the lighting effect on top of our dark mode edit from just the standard exposed for skin photograph. It's a huge difference. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I want to thank Profoto again for sponsoring this video. It's their sponsorships and companies like them that allows us to create awesome educational content for all of you. Now you all can use any lighting equipment, any camera gear that you guys like. We use and trust Profoto because it works. It works in the most extreme environments and the company offers amazing customer service to keep professionals in business and shooting. If you guys love the way that we teach, well, we have an entire library of educational resources available to you at srloungeworkshops.com. It's the entire A to Z of everything photography, from photography and composition and how to shoot and how to expose, to lighting, posing, directing, and even creating your own seven-figure business. In addition, you guys can check out what we think is the most powerful preset system available. It's at vfpresets.com. And one last thing that I want to say, and I want to remind you guys this as we go forward. Look, we have tons of great products here. We're going to recommend products from different sponsors, different advertisers. We have incredible education that's less than a dollar a day. We have amazing presets that are going to save you tons of time. But look, if any of these causes financial hardship. If there's anything here that you can't afford, don't buy it. Stick within your budget. Get what you can. I promise we're always going to give you great free education on this YouTube channel. So 
If you like our content, stick around. If you love what we do, you guys can support us by supporting, well, all the different products that we talk about through the channel. But either way, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click that little bell button so you guys are actually notified when we upload new content. My name is Pi, and I'll see you guys in the next video.